Yeah, 808 Kicks. What's happening, YouTube? It's your boy Q Rocker. I appreciate y'all for tuning in to 808 Kicks. Coming back today with another one. Something that's been and highly anticipated. Another Jordan 1. And y'all know how Nike and Jordan brand do with these ones. When they're dropping these ones, they coming through so tough, so clean. Everybody loves Jordan 1. Like, people that aren't even collectors or sneakerheads love Jordan 1s. And just something about that silhouette and the way Jordan brand tend to hit us with the colors and the different patterns and whatnot that make Jordan 1s just an iconic shoe in general. When they dropping new colorways, bringing back old colorways, remixing and flipping the old colorways, we had the court purples, the pine greens, the royal toes, even the lows and the mids starting to get traction now as far as Jordan 1 is concerned. But this shoe that we're gonna talk about today and look at today is another women's release. So we're gonna get right into it. Shout out once again to Q Lasher, Taylor Bradley, This right here is the Jordan 1 High OG tie-dye. And like I said, this shoe, highly anticipated. Women's release. For the men out there, I wear size 11. I can fit a 10 and a half. But this shoe didn't come in extended sizing. Like some women's shoes do. And it's kind of a pro and a con. I do, I like for the ladies to eat, be able to get what they want to get. But um, this thing right here, man. The tie-dye print. All around the toe box, the heel in the ankle area with the black leather, the black swoosh. They didn't do us with the sale treatment this time. This time they went with the white. I know some people were getting tired of that sale. That's part of the reason why I feel like some Jordan ones didn't do as well off top as far as release date in the next couple of weeks after. But this one right here, man, it's so clean. And it's different. Like the black toe box, it came back with the nylon tongue and the nylon tongue tag. I know people don't like really the leather tongue tag like that. The white tag with the black Nike Air on that thing, OG style. The black laces, no extra laces on this one. They're not wax laces, the regular. And they don't even seem too regular. They like, um, they're a little softer. They flat, but they're not they, they, they kind of hollow. They're not that tight stitched flat laces that we're really used to getting with Jordan 1s. But this tie-dye print is different. It's not, it's not the typical print that you see on Nike and Jordan shoes, like the texture of it. And you can tell from my opinion, just holding the shoe and, and touching the shoe the blue on the, the tie-dye print is the predominant color. You can even see on the cut that the material that they used for it was originally blue, even against the green. You see the cut is blue. However, the green on top, it feels kind of rough. It's, it's got like a crack kind of effect to it. And it, it's um, it, it's not leather. I don't think it's, if it is leather, it's unfinished leather. It's like raw leather. On the blue, when you touch the blue, it feels kind of suede-ish, a little nubuck-ish. But on the green, I never felt a material like this before. And, and I'm, I'm even reluctant to really rub it like that. 
because I almost feel like it's going to rub off, like it's a paint on top of the leather, which is probably what they did with this one. They probably had the blue leather or nubuck suede or whatever this material was before they put the green on it. And they decided not to finish it for whatever reason. When I mean finish it, I mean they didn't put no coat on top of it. Like, okay, think about the Shattered Backboard 3.0. Or think about the Royal Toes, or think about the Court Purple or Pine Greens, where they had that gloss or matte finish on it. Especially the Shadow Backboard 3.0, they had that real high shine gloss, like people call them the garbage bag ones, or you know, <laughs> or the, the Glad 3.0. This one ain't got no finish on it. Now, when we're talking about the black leather and the white leather, you can see and feel the difference from the tie-dye print. This tie-dye print, again, is something that I've never seen before. I haven't touched every Jordan 1 that's released throughout the history of Jordan 1s, but when you look at this one and when you touch it when you get your hands on which a lot of people are not gonna be able to get their hands on this shoe it was, it was limited we, they did a um, uh, Foot Locker and Champs and Hibbit and City uh, Hibbit uh, um, DTLR and all them they didn't have there was not DTLR I don't think DTLR released them yet I don't know if they're gonna be able to release them or get them in, in, in at all but they did an earlier release than Nike did. And when Nike released them, they flew like four minutes. They was gone. So if you didn't hit on Nike, you probably in the resale category when it comes to this shoe. Either you got them and you're reselling them, or you didn't get them and you're gonna buy them on resale. And trust me, the price is gonna be up now. This is one of those shoes where I don't, I don't want to put them in the Shattered Backboard 1.0 or 2.0 category. I don't want to put them in, well, they might belong in the Obsidian category. They might belong in the Rookie of the Year category. This shoe, from my opinion, I haven't checked yet, but it's probably going to be in the $300 range. And because it's a women's colorway, the sizes for dudes like me that were 11 or 12, 13, 14, we not even really gonna be able to touch this shoe in our natural size. Guys that were 12 and 13, we already did. But like I said, I can fit a 10 and a half, but I'm gonna let it live. I'm not even gonna try for it. This is my sister's shoe. This is a women's 10 which translate to a men's eight and a half. I appreciate her. Shout out to Q Lasher for letting me do the review on this shoe. I've been having a little bit of technical difficulties because I got this new camera. Uh, I was supposed to drop this review a little sooner, but she did give me the on foot footage. And um, I mean, this thing just dope. The black bottom. I mean, that's just, it's clean. It's easy to clean, but like I said, with the white against this, it is is way harder in in person, in hand, and on foot. After seeing her put it on her foot, that's why it's laced up. Y'all know Jordan ones don't come laced up. They got that that first lace, and the, the, the laces are tucked into the inside of the shoe. Speaking of the inside of the shoe. All black interior, white Nike Air, and the lining on it is like a, a nylon type of material. It's the same material as the tongue. If you look at it, I don't know if y'all can see that or not, but it's got that sheen. I know y'all can see that sheen right there on that. And when you look at the inside of the tongue, it's the same as the outside. A little bit of a different texture, it's a softer texture on the inside. So I know these things gonna be super comfortable. 
the Jumpman logo is um is shiny, it's glossy, all blacked out. It's a stamp. It's not the, the embossed or engraved kind of um, thing that Jordan been doing differently. And they are not uniform. The tie-dye print is not the same on both shoes. You can see that clearly just from the back view. The back of each shoe is different. On the collar, on the heel, the toes, they're different. So, they, they did their thing with these. I'm not mad at them. I mean, the retail 170, y'all know the retail went up 10 bucks from last year. Been a lot of craziness going on in 2020, a lot of pushbacks, a lot of um, reschedules, and been a few cancellations. You know, they canceled the, the, um, the Kobe Jordan 3s. I call them Kobe because from what we were seeing, they were gonna be black, purple, and yellow or black, purple, and orange, depending on where you're looking. But these things are hard. They're super hard. Again, they're super limited. If you get them in hand, these, these, this is one of those shoes that you're probably gonna wanna spray some type of protecting on. If you wear them a lot, and, and this leather is soft, I'm not applying too much pressure with that. Y'all know I like, I like to do that, I like to press on the toe of the shoe to, to see how that is. It's gonna crease. We know ones crease, most shoes gonna crease. Ones and fives in particular gonna crease, and fours gonna crease up pretty quickly just because of the way the shoe made. But there's some good quality leather on there. The white leather is a little more sturdy than the black here on the toe, but it's just hard. And I, I can't, I can't say nothing bad about this shoe. I really can't. Do I wish this pair was mine? Yeah, I do. Um, am I gonna go for a 10 and a half? I tried, I tried for a 10 and a half. I was probably gonna try it on at the least. If I hit, maybe I probably would have let it go. But um, even if it's something that cause I, I do, I like blue. I rock blue. I don't rock too much green. I probably would have had to get something made to go with this shoe, or look pretty hard to go with it, or just do all black maybe black and white just to try to play it off but this is a dope shoe and the women uh, shout out to the ladies out there that got this shoe I hope y'all uh, are happy with it if y'all do not like this shoe that's a personal preference thing just because just from a style thing it's hard it's real hard this ain't this ain't this ain't nothing that would've came out in 1985, I can tell you that. In 1985, you might've got laughed at or joned on for wearing something like this. But in 2020, this is what's hard. On a 1985 silhouette, you can't really beat it. You can't. This is one of the dopest Jordan ones that come out this year. It's aside from the Royal Toes, and the court purples. This might be the dopest Jordan one that we have seen so far in a high cut. Other than the 85 cut. The 85 cut black and red. That's just a classic look in general. Uh, the, the, the reverse red look with the predominant red instead of the black and the mismatch and all that. But I ain't really got too much more to say about this one. It's just hard. It's just, it's hard. I hope my sister really take care of these. I got some stuff um, I'm gonna suggest to her. I got some protective spray, rejuvenator. 
I don't know how it's, how it would do on this because it's really stain and water repellent. I do feel like water will probably damage this shoe as far as the paint goes. You don't want this paint to uh, get wet. You probably don't want this shoe to get too hot. And uh, here in Georgia, it's been 90 degrees. It's raining right now. It's actually storming right now. But um, you probably don't want to have this shoe like sitting in the trunk of your car, in the back seat of your car in the daytime. You want to keep it in the house, in the box, in um, some cool conditions because this green, it looks pretty fragile. That's the only thats the only thing about this shoe. I wish they would have put a top coat on it. But there are things that you can do to protect the finish on this shoe as far as the finish being raw with the green on top of the blue. And this blue, I think the blue is, is like a rough, a uh, short hair suede, either a short hair suede or new one. But I done talked enough about this thing. I'm gonna let y'all check out the on feed. The Jordan 1 tie dye. If you can get your hands on it, shout out to you. If not, make sure that your pair is official. Make sure the sticker matches up with the real box. Make sure you got that quality control sticker on the inside of that thing. Leave y'all with that. Y'all give me a like. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know if y'all went out to it. If you think it's dope, if you think it's hand, if if uh you you appreciate what I'm saying to y'all, hit me up in the comments. If you're not subscribed to 808 Kicks, y'all get with me. We got more content coming up, more heat. And by the way, I make all the beats on my video. So if you like them, if you need them, y'all get at me. 808kicks underscore ATL on Instagram. Until the next one, I'm going to get with y'all. Peace.